beautiful friends, how are you today? It's good to see you again. My name is Susanna Kay, if you don't already know me, owner of Spark Organizing. I teach organizing and productivity through my productivity coaching and the 365 Project. I'm glad that you could join me today. I wanted to hop on today and talk to you about something that came up during a speaking event that I had the other day. I spoke to an amazing group of women about some of my favorite apps and programs for productivity and reducing stress and managing your whole life because there's just so much going on, right? We're always juggling things. So during this speech, I received a number of questions which were all fantastic and there was one of them that I wanted to dive into a little bit deeper because I did not have time and it was not quite the right place during that event, but it's such a good question. And I wanted to go into a little bit more here. It's about how to figure out which your which things on your to-do list are your priorities. So the reason that this came up is one of the things that I teach most often, one of my favorite tricks is to determine what your top three priorities are on your to-do list. That way you can sleep well at night knowing that you did the most important things during your day, even if your to-do list is still just as long or even longer than when you started your day, and you can get towards your goals faster. So determining these three priorities, it sounds great, but how you do that, right? Because they all seem urgent. I know when I look at my to-do list, a lot of times I can identify 20 priorities when I first look at the list and it's overwhelming. So here are a few techniques I use to try to whittle down to which three I feel are the most important in my day to day. I'm going to focus primarily on business, but this also works with your personal life. If you have some personal priorities that need to work in with it, that's fantastic. This can work with that as well. The first thing I do, and this is a huge one that will change not only the priority setting, but this will also completely impact your success in your business and life, know your goals. Not only know your goals, but create smart goals. I don't just mean smart as an intelligent goal, but a smart goal ha meets specific criteria. And smart is an acronym. I use my little goal worksheet for each of my goals. For one, try not to have too many goals going on at once. That can be overwhelming, and that right there will muddle all of that priority setting for you. And you won't be able to decide what's a priority because you've got too many goals you're working on. I try to have maybe three goals, big goals that I'm working on at once for my business. And then maybe one or two for my life, one or two for spirituality or health or whatever. But as far as business goes, I'd say three are probably max and determine which one is the most important for you. So when I'm setting a SMART goal, first off it's specific. So for example, my goal right here, my goal was to have 200 happy new clients this year. That's great, right? How do I know when I've reached that? I have to be specific first. So I adjusted my 200 happy clients goal to be 200 new organizing clients. So now that's more specific. Who rate us five stars or more in follow-up calls or cards or online by December 31st, 2018. So that is specific. The specific includes measurable. It is measurable, there's 200 of them. And I know what I'm measuring. I know that these are new organizing clients that would not involve existing clients. It would not, not that I don't want them to be happy, but it would not involve the existing clients. It would not involve the 365 project or coaching clients. These are new organizing clients. Uh, it is achievable. It's good to have a stretch goal. 200 new clients by the end of the year is definitely a stretch, but it is possible to do. So it's an achievable goal. Relevant. Is this relevant even to what I care about in my life? A lot of times we set goals based on what we think that we're supposed to want or supposed to be doing or based on what other people have told us our goal should be. A relevant goal fits into your morals, your values, your desires out of life. And this ties directly to what is important to me in my life. 
In my life, I want to feel like my work has purpose. I want to feel like I am helping people and improving their lives by having been in them, whether it's through organizing their home or a Facebook Live like this one. So this is very relevant to the goals of my life and the values of who I am. And then T is for time bound. Does it have a date, a, a finish date? Otherwise, how do you know when to measure to see if you actually met your goal? And mine does. It would be 12 31 2018 because it's by the end of the year. So again, my SMART goal is specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. That would be 200 at happy clients, which are 200 new organizing clients who rate us five stars online or in a follow-up call or card by December 31st, 2018. Now that I know my goal, and I've got a whole goal worksheet that has the actions attached to the goal, it has my why, so that I know that it's fitting into who I am, what I want out of life. It's This is my relevancy, and it's also what inspires me when I feel like it's trudging up through mud, I can read my why, which my why is I will be happy knowing my work and life have a purpose and I will get more referrals and therefore more money and growth. That's my why. It also has some accountability tactics I plan to use for my goal. So within this, I have to state my goal to my mastermind group because those ladies will hold me accountable and check on me, track my goal monthly, and report it to my team and enlist my assistant, Mary, to assist in data collection. Those are all on my goal sheet. So now that I know this is one of my top, top goals, I only have three working at one time and this is one of the top ones. Now when I'm looking at my to-do list, I can figure out which of those items on my to-do list even fit into my goal or are they towards another goal? Sometimes we, find new things that we're excited about throughout the year and we add it to our list. I know I do all the time. I have a separate list for ideas now because I can easily get distracted. I am like a squirrel on Red Bull. <laughs> I don't focus well. And if I can separate out those ideas and really focus on the goals, then that helps me make sure that I'm still on track for what I'm doing this year. Then I look at what remains that's still towards my goals, which one of my goals is always, you know, be safe and keep a healthy, happy business. So along those lines, I might have a few tasks such as bookkeeping, pay my staff, do a client project that's coming up is due, uh, call new organizing leads, write the book that I'm working on with my friend Rochelle. Those might be a few tasks on my to-do list. Uh, update the firewall on my website. <laughs> That's, that's another one or for my website. So now I look at that list and see what fits into the current three goals. And one would be, what would it give me the biggest gain? What is going to move me towards that goal the fastest and give me the biggest leap? Also, what will have the biggest loss? What's the biggest fire that will be created if I don't do it? So for example, on that list that I just gave you, paying my staff, that would probably be a pretty big fire that would happen if I did not do it. So that would be one that would be considered possibly one of my highest priorities because then I would have an unhappy staff which would lead to poor performance or they'd quit. And also one of my goals is also just to be one of the best places to work. <laughs> and if your paycheck is late, I think that dips you out of that best place to work category. So that's what I do. And then as far as the gain, the client project that's due tomorrow is probably on the list of possible highest priorities because it's due tomorrow and it fits directly to the goal of 200 happy clients. I won't get a five star review if I don't deliver on what I say I'm going to do and I'll get a pretty bad reputation so it's going to be harder to get more clients. That ties directly to that goal. Writing my book, yes it is a goal but it's not one of my top three goals. So that actually drops off the priorities list if there's something ahead of it that does fit into the goal. Calling back the leads, that fits into the goal. I can't have happy clients if I don't get clients, so calling the leads is important. Once I've narrowed that down, now I look at how long it would take to complete each of these. That time helps me figure out how many of these I can realistically fit into my day. So I write down the time, and then usually I have to double it because it's gonna take twice as long. It always does. Write down the time and double it. I promise you, you might end up with extra time at the end of the day, but probably not very often. 
And then I can see how many of these will fit into the day. And when I come up with that final list, we'll talk about this a little bit more tomorrow. And it's probably backwards because of lovely Facebook doing it backwards. But this is how I can also analyze some of these priorities, the larger ones. The 30 minute items or 20 minute items, a lot of times I'll just quickly do them. And if they're a high enough priority, I have a 30 or a 20 minute one in there with some of the bigger ones in my top three. But for the larger ones, I will sometimes have to actually sit down and analyze which ones truly fit in and which ones are most important. And I'll go into my little cheat sheet tomorrow. I'll post a quick image in the notes at the bottom of the video. But this helps me determine if it fits in the goal, how long it will take, when it is due, what the gains are, and if it could be delegated, purged, or automated. That's the last part of my top three priorities and any type of analysis of my to-do list is, could it be deleted off the list? Is it still even relevant? Or should it just be moved to the ideas list? Or is it really not important enough? Is it not gonna move the needle enough? And there's so many things that hit our lists that won't really hit move that needle all that much. They should probably just come off the list, otherwise they muddy the waters. Uh, as far as delegating, if you have a virtual assistant, you can delegate to them. Sometimes you can delegate to a consultant or a professional. For example, updating the firewall that's on my list. Very important, right? If I was going to do it, it would probably take me an hour or more. I don't even know. I'd have to research it first. I've got no clue what I'm doing. I am worth more per hour than what I would pay the web professional who can just do it. So that's something it should be delegated. It should not even hit my top priorities except the action of to delegate, you know, hire somebody or send it to, I have an IT guy, send it to him and say, hey, will you please do this? And then I'm gonna earn my hourly rate at my level and pay him at his level and I come out ahead. And finally, automate. There are some things that can simply be automated. So as far as paying my staff, there are a number of those steps that I've automated so it makes it super easy to pay them. I went from an hour long payment to you know, under 30 minutes now because most of it's automated. So it might take a little bit of extra time setting up the automations, but which of these items can be automated or part of them be automated to save you some time because once you set those up, amazing difference in your day after that. It's just things start to run like clockwork. And in the future, we'll talk about some other ways to automate because there are just a number of things that I do that anybody can do. It does not actually require a lot of software or knowledge and great ways to automate. So to recap, you want to make sure that they fit into your goals and your values first off. And your goals should only be about three or so and they should be smart goals so that you're working off the correct path and you know your map you should analyze what has the biggest gain or loss potential in that item and figure out which one has the most gain or the most loss potential. You should figure out what can be delegated, automated, or deleted and just purged off that list. And then you should also estimate how much time it takes. So that's the fourth one. Estimate how much time it would take. That should narrow you down to what the true priorities are. If you still come up with more than three, sometimes you can just go with your energy level. If they're all pretty much equivalent, go with your energy level. Which top three are you probably best to work on today? If I'm having a rough day, usually create, creative tasks are a little bit easier for me. If I'm supercharged and motivated, usually some of those more analytical tasks that I don't like as much can be good to take on. So you can go with your energy level. You can go with just simply what fits into your day. If it doesn't fit on a post-it, it doesn't fit in your day, I can tell you right now. So don't have these lofty goals of finishing five huge tasks. Three big ones, and that's your day. And after that, we will talk tomorrow about if you're still having troubles, how do you break it down from there? And this is good for the bigger projects too, as far as priorities, because it takes a couple minutes to put together, but it really clarifies 
what is actually important versus what is the idea of the moment or what can truly drop off the list and drop down further. So I hope this helped you out. We'll talk more next week and I hope that you enjoyed it. If you want a copy of my goals worksheet, I have that for you for free that you can download. I will post a link in the bottom eventually. Right now I'm still working on getting the link up together so that the PDF will come to you. But later today, the link will be at the bottom, or if you want to not forget and just get it off your list right now, shoot me a message in Facebook and tell me what email address you would like it sent to, and I will send you the link to download directly to your email address and make it super easy for you. But I love the Smart Goal Worksheet. It outlines all the essential parts, makes it super clear when I'm setting my goals. So if you'd like a free copy, send me a message in Facebook, with your email address, or wait and check the comments below. And if this is not during the live presentation, it should not be too much longer after that that link will show up. And then you can just click on it and get your free worksheet. I hope to see you next week. I will, next week we will give you a free version of this that's much nicer than my chicken scratch version that you can download as well. And I hope you enjoy it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you feel like I missed anything, let me know that too. I'd love to hear what works for you. I hope you have a beautiful day, all my friends. I will see you next week, and I love you so much. Bye.